to this webinar on macular telangiectasia. I'm Dr. Julie Rodman. You may recall this slide from previous webinars where I have delineated the various parts of the retina and choroid. Macular telangiectasia has the propensity to affect both the inner and outer retina, including the choroid. Thus, there are multiple orange arrows on this OCT indicating the broad scope of potential involvement with this disease. Macular telangiectasia, or idiopathic juxtafoveal telangiectasia type 2, is a bilateral disease of unknown cause with characteristic alterations of the macular capillary network. Fundoscopically, MACTEL is characterized by telangiectatic vessels in the juxtafoveolar region, most commonly temporal to the fovea of both eyes. This condition may pose a diagnostic challenge when evaluated fundoscopically due to the subtle foveal findings. Fundoscopically, you can see here that there is a right angle venule. There is this little yellow spot, which we like to say is a superficial crystalline deposit. There's some hyperpigmentation here, which is what we call an RPE pigment plaque. Other things you may notice is really like an overall graying or reduced retinal transparency of the parafoveal retina. And eventually, there may be development of neovascular complexes. On the left-hand side, you can see the early OCT signs of MACTEL. These include temporal foveal pit enlargement, secondary to loss of the outer nuclear layer and ellipsoid zone, that eventually can progress into cavitations or cysts on the superficial part of the OCT scan. You can see on this scan that I have delineated the cyst formation, the temporal foveal pit enlargement, and the attenuation of the outer nuclear layer. Often, only the internal limiting membrane is left in place over these areas, lending to the term ILM drape. The orange arrows on this slide are directed at the areas of ILM draping. You can also see loss of the ellipsoid zone, as indicated by the red arrows on this slide. As the disease progresses, the outer retina becomes involved. This slide shows RPE hyperplasia that occurs as a result of continued damage to the outer retina and photoreceptor layer. Hyperreflective areas on OCT, remember, correlate to RPE hyperplasia or pigment migration. This can be seen by the red arrows on this scan. Again, with more disease progression, the outer retina continues to become involved, as you can see on these OCT scans. This OCT shows enlargement of the cavitations, both in the intraretinal and subretinal spaces, as seen by the red arrows. This would be an intraretinal space, and here you can see involvement of the outer retina or subretinal cavitation. There's also extensive pigment migration, which is indicated by the orange arrow on the OCT on the bottom part of the slide. OCTA, or OCT angiography, is a new technology which allows for visualization of the retinal and crotal vasculature. It's an outstanding imaging modality for macular telangiectasia because it has a very specific appearance on OCT angiography. It can be used to further evaluate the outer retina and choroid for the potential development of subretinal neovascularization and choroidal anastomoses. So when you look at this osteangiography scan, we're going to emphasize initially the deep plexus, which is right here, because macular slangiectasia initiates or originates in the deep plexus. What you'll begin to see are signs of vessel slangiectasia and rarefaction temporally, which is indicated on this osteangiography slide by the orange arrow. Over time, these abnormalities will extend anterior to the superficial capillary plexus, where you can see the changes, again, in the parafoveal temporal part of the scan with the red arrow. Over time, these changes in the inner retinal plexi, the superficial and deep, can extend to the outer retinal space and form a subretinal anastomosis. You can begin to see in the outer retinal space here a hyperreflective area, which indicates that there is the beginning of some subretinal involvement. However, if you look at the choroidal slab, all you can see is some shadowing indicated by this dark area here of hyporeflectivity, just indicating that there has been some overlying changes to the tissue. However, there is no evidence of choroidal neovascularization. I hope that you found this webinar useful in discussing the top, topic of macular telangiectasia, and I look forward to seeing you at future webinars on advanced OCT interpretation.